Well, it's a pretty morning. It's now about 40 degrees, so the snow is melting. It's a clear day, nice sunny day, and I can finally get to this electrical system. I want to talk about what we've got and kind of some of the challenges we have and how I'm going to approach dealing with that. Uh, we have everything, this is the entire electrical system, the solar battery bank, charge controller, generator, everything. Uh, there's a 10,000 watt diesel generator right here, fuel tank over there. We generally have to run this at least once a day uh, to run the water pump. Uh, you can't even think about running the water pump on the battery bank, it just draws too much juice. So if we have to do laundry, um, take showers, whatever, turn on the generator, run it for about an hour. It also has a battery charger that we can flip over and charge the batteries while we're running the generator, so that's good. And then there's a switch box here that allows us to switch between the generator and the battery bank. <clears throat> One of the challenges we've had, because it's been down to like 20 degrees, is this, uh, this whole enclosure is open. And batteries hate the cold, so they don't store as much energy as efficiently. And so during the day when you get, get full sun, it, they struggle to, to store the energy. Um, the other issue we had was two days as it was snowing, you know, your solar panels get covered with snow and they're not producing energy, uh, plus the clouds and everything like that. So we ran the generator quite a bit. All right, so the batteries we have are, we have two rows here. Most of, all of these are six volt batteries hooked together to make 12 volts. And this whole array is 12 volt. These batteries came out of a cell tower. Um, they're very good batteries. Most of these, most all of these batteries were used when they were put in here, and <clears throat> I think they're five to seven years old. They're all lead, flooded lead acid batteries, and so we're kind of on the edge of the lifespan of the entire battery bank. This here is the charge controller. It's just a little 30 amp charge controller. Um, it does work, and then there's a 5,000 watt inverter here that sends AC power to the, the, uh, the camp. So what I'm going to do first is hook a meter up to this charge controller and see what we're actually getting. It's uh, pretty much peak sun time right now. Getting 13.03 volts from the panels, which is about the best that I've gotten so far. Usually it was 11.4 to 11.8, so that's real good news. I'm getting 13 volts from the array, and then coming from the charge controller to the battery bank, I'm getting 12.12. So I'm losing some energy there right in this charge controller. 13.03 in, 12.12 out. Now, the energy coming from the battery bank to the inverter, that's the important one we want to know. That is pure 12 volts, 12.00 volts going into the inverter. <clears throat> so that's perfect. That's kind of exactly what we're looking for. And here you can see, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of got some cobwebs on it. This indicates the battery voltage coming in. When the fridge kicks on, this goes bzzz, turns orange, doesn't like it. Uh, and then if there's an amp overload, this screams and goes red and this whole inverter shuts off. And this is the main switch to turn it off. So if we want to switch from our battery bank to the generator, uh, we come out here, we flip this switch, which shuts the battery bank down to the house, flip these, close this, open that, turn on the generator, and then we're running on generator power. Um, I think our limitation is we just don't have enough battery. We don't have enough amp hours to power what we're trying to power right now for kind of an entire day. And we certainly don't have enough power to run the camp for two or three days if there were like cloudy days. And so we're having to run the generator. But we have a good starting place. We have a lot of the pieces and parts we need to expand it. <clears throat> so next we'll, I'll show you some of the things that we're actually trying to power and why we're having such a challenge with that. Okay, this is the main 
switch for the submersible water pump that is down in the spring box. I don't know much about it. I know it's a, a 120 volt AC pump, probably draws a lot of amps because we did actually try to turn this on on the battery bank and not the generator and it went Pshh! it was bad so we always have to run the generator whenever we want to run the pump to uh, take showers or do laundry or any of those things and then we make sure we fill up the sink with hot water and and uh, keep the pipes full of warm water helps kind of prevent them from freezing uh, so that's going to be a thing that we have to deal with in another video, which will be our water system. And uh, so that's our biggest uh, electrical problem right now. Our second biggest electrical problem is... So in our last video, uh, which was our tour video that Jamie took you through, we showed you the wood stove and the refrigerator. This is a traditional, regular 120 volt AC refrigerator. This is how close they are to each other. And this is a big problem. This is killing our battery bank every night because it's trying to compete with this. Um, there are a few options. Uh, switching to a propane fridge, which doesn't use electricity, but then you have to direct vent it most of the time, and they're real expensive. Uh, and we're not really ready to spend that kind of money on something that should be a temporary solution until we build our house. There's also DC powered fridges that are smaller. Converting chest freezers into a fridge with a, a thermostat. For right now, a lot of suggestions in the comments was move it out on the front porch. And I was a little concerned about that because we obviously don't want the compressor to freeze. So what we're gonna do is move it out on the front porch, keep it unplugged. As long as the temperature is below 40, everything should stay cold. It won't run at all and we're not drawing down our batteries. Once it gets a little bit above 40 degrees, maybe 45 degrees, we'll plug it in and it should run okay. And we might leave it out there until springtime. Uh, it'll run a lot less and hopefully we'll not draw down our batteries because it's killing our battery bank just about every night. Even when I have it turned all the way down, uh, many nights I've been just unplugging it and not, you know, we don't open it at night. So, so I got my Zappy thermometer here. Uh, this it's just coals right now. It doesn't really have a hot fire going. So we got 356. Uh, it's 400 over here. 250 at the pipe. And then your stainless steel double walled insulated part is 106, which is good. But the fridge door, 105, 107. This has been up to 120 degrees. And this is the problem. Right here, it's not it's about 100 degrees almost and you can feel the heat on it and so we just got to get this away from the wood stove so that's what we're going to do we're going to probably take everything out get it out the door set it on the porch get it situated and that's pretty much where our fridge is going to be for the next couple months um, and then we'll see the impact that that has on our battery bank So first thing is we're going to vacuum the coils because got to make sure that it'll run as efficiently as possible. So to do that, we got to hook up the generator. All right, I'm gonna start kind of in this corner and go that way and talk about some of the things that we're trying to power here to get an idea of the size of system that we're going to need. Uh, this is the important part. This is where we edit. I cannot run this computer. This is a full-on engineering workstation that just draws like 300 watts. Um, I thought about switching to a laptop, but I've got everything set up the way I want it, so I need to build a system that's gonna power this. Uh, first thing I do is put a watt meter on everything I'm trying to power. My actual watt meter died, so I bought this last week. This is a TAC Life. does the same thing. And so far, I like it a lot better than the watt meter I had. Right now, the only thing I have plugged into this is this UPS that I bought. 
uh, which is running the internet router and a couple chargers for like iPhones and iPads and things like that. So not a lot of load. I bought this UPS to plug these things into because it puts out pure sine wave power and it has an automatic voltage voltage regulator in it so that if I'm getting variable input power from the array or whatever, this maintains a constant output voltage to the devices by using the battery and it allows me to also switch from the generator to the battery bank without flashing these off and I don't lose internet. So got that. Right now this thing is drawing 34 watts a half an amp. Now the 34 watts isn't a lot but this thing runs 24-7 so multiply that by 24 it's over 700 watt hours per day. So that's one thing we need to have energy for. Here's a little charging station we have set up. If you saw my video on rechargeable batteries, you know that we use these little Eneloop batteries and we recharge them and we use them for everything. Um, I have this all on a switch down here so if this is full I don't need to run it but if we're running the generator I'll just flick this little switch on. Everything lights up and it'll keep these charged. Now we use these little batteries in these like puck lights. They have a little motion sensor on them and we have these all over the place. So they're not tied to anything, they just run off little batteries and then as you walk down the hall they light up and then they shut off after a certain amount of time. We love these. You can get these off Amazon for like $26 for a six pack and uh, it provides most of our light at night. Now we also have regular lights. Uh, all of them are like 10 watt LED bulbs or 6 watt LED bulbs and I calculated that we only have to draw about 100 watt hours a day maximum for our lighting uh, because we use these. And it's probably a little less than 100 watt hours. Now these little gadgets that Jamie uses to cook and things, we definitely want to be able to run these. Uh, usually when you want to figure out how much energy something uses, you look on it and it'll tell you this thing draws 500 watts when it kicks on so that's huge. Uh, usually she's only running these things when the generator is going. Uh, that's a big load to draw off of a solar battery bank. All right, So you can see this Wonder Mill grain grinder uh, requires 120 volts and it draws 11.7 amps which is pretty pretty big. It's a lot of juice. It's got a little 12 amp fuse here as well. Uh, the good thing is we also have a Wonder Mill Junior hand crank grain mill that we'll, we use most of the time now. Uh, we made a couple videos about how to use that. So you can check out that link. All right, let's go see what else we got to run. As you can see, when we walk down the hall, our little lights turn on and they do that as you walk down. You never have to turn a light on in here at night washing machine. We just got this. Uh, we were looking for one of the most efficient ones we could find. This is a high efficiency top loader. Works really good, um, but it does draw uh, probably about 270 watts. Takes about, well, it only takes about 30 minutes actually to do a load of laundry, but um, I haven't tried to run this off the battery bank yet. Like I said, because we need to run the pump on the generator, we just run it while we're running the generator. But if I need, I'm, I'm de definitely going to add the energy this uses to my list. Um, again, this isn't something that runs 24-7. It only runs while you're doing laundry, so it's only going to draw those 200 and some watts for about 30 minutes. So this, not nearly as crazy as a fridge or a water pump. No dryer. No dryer. Uh, we hang our clothes outside. They freeze dry in the winter, and that works great. And they smell awesome. So dryers are bad. Okay, so those are the main things we run every day and we need to be able to run every day. And so we need to obviously size the system to accommodate that. Some of the other things that we need to run that we don't run all the time are things like a vacuum cleaner, um, some power tools. I haven't even gotten into some of the tools that I'll need to be using. I'll probably just use that little Honda generator uh, as much as I can for tools down at the little shop. Um, but I'm going to figure in all of those things that only run occasionally and size the battery bank uh, accordingly. I think the very first thing I'm going to do is replace that charge controller with a MPPT uh, 
controller so I can s get a better idea of what's actually going on uh, w with the whole charging system. And I'm not going to spend any kind of money on this array or this system that I can't uh, use the components in the house system that we're going to build. So I'm not going to spend anything just specifically for this system down here. Uh, everything will be eventually put into the house. Uh, so that's my challenge right now with batteries. Uh, for me to try and fix the battery situation, I'd have to kind of build a whole shelter with an insulated battery box and all of that to accommodate new batteries. And I don't know how I'm going to address that yet, but I'm going to figure that out probably in another video. Now if I increase the uh, size of the battery bank or the amp hour capacity of the battery bank, I'm probably going to have to add a couple solar panels so that I can charge everything within one day's worth of sun hours. And uh, so we'll, obviously I can uh, repurpose those for the new place. Now my goal ultimately is to have a battery bank that I can run the entire place off of for uh, three days of autonomy. That is without, like on cloudy days, with no input from the solar or no input from wind or hydro or any other renewable energy source, I want to be able to run everything off the battery bank for at least three days. And so that required, that, that allows me to figure out the size of the battery bank I need based on the loads that I know I'm going to run. Right now I'm at about a 2300 amp hour system at 24 volts, if I put in a 24 volt system. That's a lot of batteries. So how do you reduce that? use less energy requiring appliances and tools and things. Um, I don't know what else you do. I mean, that's what you need to do to run a house and you need 2300 amp hours of battery. And then you can size your array to make sure they get charged and put all the other components in that allow you to do that safely without burning things up and correct wire sizes and all that. As I figure all that stuff out, we're going to take you along and uh, show you how I do it, I guess. So this is the array we have. These are two panels, commercial panels, and these are three uh, homemade panels made out of storm doors with glass in them, uh, with each individual cell hand soldered. I haven't tested these yet, I'm about to. I kind of propped them up a little bit, but I haven't angled them correctly for the winter sun, which we have shining pretty much optimally today, so this is a good day to do this video. Uh, this panel here looks like it's a 100 watt optimum 17.8 volt output. This one is also a 100 watt panel. Maximum 18 volts. So this is a pretty good little panel here. So there's 200 watts. I'm not sure what these are. It's putting out about 14, well, 18 volts. 18 and a half volts this thing's putting out. 19.17 volts. 17.72 volts. One of the things I do want to do is make sure I got these angles kind of optimal for winter time. And I did the math, I have it written on my phone, so that's what I'm going to do now. I came up here a couple weeks ago and just kind of propped these up on scraps of stuff to angle it up. They were laying down for summer. Uh, I did that before I figured out what the actual angle is supposed to be. So so our, you, you angle it based on your latitude and then you do a formula for us, our latitude is 36.096, uh, and then you multiply that by 0.9 and add 29, and that gives you your new angle, which is 61.48 for winter time. It's 55.98 for summertime. So I'm going to try and get these angled to 61.5 degrees, and to do that I'm just going to use my phone which has a inclinometer in it. That's about it. 
18.7 volts now. So we picked up a little over a volt. This is the size of the wire that feeds the battery bank all the way down the hill, and that's got to be 150 yards. If we're getting 18, 19 volts from up here and down there, it was 11 point, well, it was close to 12 volts. I'm surprised at it. We're not losing more than we are. But maybe angling these up a little bit, we'll go test it again and see if we're getting a little bit more juice into the charge controller. But I don't have much slack here to tilt that panel up, and I do not want to disconnect that or pull it apart. I mean, let's see if I can get some more slack. 18 volts. It's pretty darn good for a homemade panel. So we're losing like 6 volts between the top of the hill and the charge controller. And the charge controller is putting out 12.23 to the battery bank. I don't know. That's what we're dealing with, so... Next I gotta figure out... Uh, I'm gonna put a different charge controller on here so that I can better get, get some better data out of it. One of those ones that reports like an Outback or Magna or whatever that they are. So, uh, stay tuned. A lot of the times at the end of our videos, we do some sort of funny outtakes that have happened, but uh, we wanted to do some special thank you to uh, you guys out there who have been supporting us on our journey. Uh, we are obviously in our dream spot, uh, and without you guys being there to support us on our journey, we just wouldn't be here. I wanted to give a special thank you to those of you guys who are liking uh, and sharing our video content. It tells Google that our videos are worth watching and it has um, got us 46,000 subscribers so far and I can't tell you how wonderful that is and by having that, uh, that's helping to support our journey. On top of that, a lot of you guys who shop through Amazon are doing your Christmas shopping through our Amazon links. Again, that we get a small commission, a small kickback from uh, you guys shopping through those links and again that helps to support us on our journey. And then there are a few other guys out there who have given a financial donation and I wanted to give a special shout out to you guys. This is long overdue. Uh, Wendy, Dorothy, Fred, Arthur V, Arthur S, Robert, Kirk, Michelle, Francois, Donna, and R&I Systems. Thank you guys so much for your donations. Uh, and if I missed anybody, I apologize. I tried to get everybody on there. Thank you guys so much for uh, contributing to our channel. Also, uh, another thing that's long overdue is a big thank you to Sandra Burke. She had sent us ginseng uh, that had arrived right as we were packing things up, and this unfortunately went into a box and it didn't get unpacked until just now, but it's just a wonderful gift. She had sent us ginseng and some roots, some leaves, and also some seeds that we hope to plant on some of the northwest facing um, ridges of our property. And then also I wanted to give a special shout out to a couple channels. Uh, we have Mindy from Life Goes North who uh, has just been supporting us and she sent us a wonderful Christmas card. And then of course Vicki at Noble Homestead who has been texting me all along and uh, just supporting us as we transition to this property. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, we hope to continue to be here for a very long time so stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.